In the last explained video, we covered Noctua's mainstream lineup. We had a closer look at the NF F12, the NF S12A, and the NF A12X25. We covered how they performed, we had an in depth view on what exactly is included, and what is done to these fans in order to make them stick to that Noctua level of, you know, Noctua ness. And we even had a quick trip to the world of boring definitions like the PQ graphs, and that was, uh, you know, uh, mind boggling. For today, I wanted to expand on that. We will add Noxua's Redex line and their industrial lineup to this Noxua 120mm Fine Explained series. And thus, we will finally. No. Yeah, something like that. And thus, we will conclude the whole thing because there is no 120mm fan left to cover. However, this is an expansion video and considering that the last one was the longest video I have ever created, I will not repeat anything that has been said before, so please, if you have not yet, go and watch the first video first, because there I am explaining and going over stuff like Noctua's SSO bearing, something that I will just not do again today, and, and then, you know, after that we turn to this video, because this video will only be about Noxia's Redux line and their industrial line of fans. Let's just skip any unnecessary intro and, and bump straight into the action, the Redux fan lineup. As innovative as Noxia's naming team usually is, Redux seems to be some sort of wordplay with the word reduce, and that's essentially what Noxia did. Reduce everything to the bare minimum except for function streamlining the packaging, no extension cables, a 40mm long cable attached straight to the fan, no low noise adapters, no rubber to get the vibrations out whatsoever. No extra stuff done to give the fan that edge over other fans. Do you remember that whole damn list I presented in the last video that Noxia does to its fans? Well, the only thing left is the magnet behind the bearing. No advanced airflow optimized frame, no stepped inlet design, no surface microstructures, no metal bearing shell, not even the SSO2 bearing made it into the product. Noxua actually did repurpose its older and original SSO1 bearing. But hey, at least the fan is still made out of the same fiberglass reinforced PBT or how my younger self used to say polybutylene, poly, po Polu butu polu oh man polu polu butu lin terifalite polu butu lin terifalite and was all of that worth it? Well the, the price truly took advantage of that. Noxia's Redux lineup is generally set at an MSRP of 1490. That's about 7 euros underneath the original lineup. Or even 10 if you take a look at the Chromex Black version. But the price wasn't the only thing reduced in this year's purge. Out of that insane amount of fans, only two are left over. The Redux NFP12 and NFS12B. As you might expect, cause you know, it's actually still Noctua, there are a shit ton of subversions. But luckily, Noctua did manage to make it easier to understand this time around. Instead of the old ULF, FLX, FML versions, the Redux lineup names were simplified too. Now we have the name of the fan, followed by the amount of RPM, followed by either nothing or PVM if it's the case. So on one hand, we have the NFP12 lineup consisting of a 1700 RPM PVM version, a 1300 RPM PVM version, a regular 1300 RPM rocking a 3-pin header, and a 900 RPM baby version with the same 3-pin header, or how my eyes are seeing it, the golden goose. On the other side, we have a NFS12B in its 1200 RPM PVM version and two 3-pin versions, a 12 and a 700 RPM, which are invisible to me. Going over each fan individually, the NFP12 is kind of the all-rounder fan of this series. While spinning at around 1700 RPM, it is able to push around 70 CFM at 2.83 mm of H2O while yielding at 25.1 dB. The S12B, on the other hand, is who would have thought the airflow focused fan? Spinning at 1200 RPM, this fan is pushing around 58 CFM at 1.31 mm of H2O, all while 
yelling at 18.1 dB. So in this lineup we've got basically what the main lineup should have been, an all-rounder fan and an airflow fan. No need for a useless fan. Compared to all of Nochiba's other lineups, the Redux fans also got its own color scheme. Coming in in a grey and darker grey color scheme, they look, well, simple. These, these look simple. Now before we continue, a small personal note. I cannot shake the feeling of that Redux is, is not actually like a, a, a reduction of that sense, but actually just an option reusing the discontinued lineup. Feature-wise, uh, this would absolutely make sense, even name-wise. And, and design wise, look at look at this bump. That's the same bump a, a, as on the Redux series. It these two indentations there and, and the blade cuts and, and everything. That being said, there is quite a bit more weirdness about these fans. Let's take the all-rounder NFP12. Not only does it push more air than the original NFA12X25 or S12A, but at the same time it generates even more static pressure than the NFF12. So looking at just raw numbers, this should be the absolute best Loctua fan spec-wise. By a margin, I might add. But we all know that this is not going to happen. Going back to that PQ curve that we all love from the last video, although it may be true that the extreme points of the P12 are further outside than any other fan, this does not guarantee that there not, will not be like the, the worst indentation somewhere in the middle. We will see and we will then draw a line for the PQ curve of the P12 because Lachia does not seem to provide any. Anyway, that's essentially the Redux line. A Simpler, easier to understand line, no shenanigans, no enhancements, just a fan featuring noxious quality and performance, or so we will see. The last line that was left out until now is the notorious industrial PPC, or in other words, I dare you to put a finger in there. Unlike the Redux lineup, the industrial line is going straight back to the roots and includes absolutely everything, even including the SSO2B ring. However, the word industrial does mean industrial here. Although these fans are sharing their all black design with the Chromex black counterparts, there is nothing even remotely customizable about those fans. A pre attached 40cm long wire, a 4 pack of screws, and pre-attached Noxia brown rubber anti-vibration pads around the fan. That's it. Industry. The whole lineup consists of six different fans ranging from 2000 to 3000 RPM max speed. However, this time around it won't be that easy because, you know, industrial. By default, Noxia's industrial line has an IP rating of IP52, or in other words, it's dust protected and it will survive a squirrel doing some aqua gun. Then we've also got a IP67 version, or in other words, you can drown me for an hour in something in between 15 centimeters and 1 meters, but I will not tell you where exactly the limit is. So we have a 2000 RPM version that is rocking a 3 pin header, two 2000 RPM versions rocking a 4 pin PVM header, one of which is submergible, and then we got the Golden Goose, my favorite, the 3000 RPM fan rocking a 4 pin PVM connection. This monster of a fan can push almost 110 CFM at a total at 7.63 mm of H2O, and yes, if you need to dispose of anyone, this is the place to push them through. However, we are still not quite done. There are still two versions left, a 2000 RPM and 3000 RPM version. However, kind of similarly to the 5 volt versions that we've seen in the last video, this one requires a 24 volts current. I'm not sure where these are exactly being used in the wild, but according to Noxia's product page, these are made for the automotive industry. And I know that trucks are running on uh, 24 volt batteries, so my best guess is truck. But before we continue, I do want to emphasize that although I'm, it may be really tempting to go for a fan that pushes twice as much uh, like any other one here, these are no fans for the private sector. The word industrial is to be taken literally here. This is a fan meant to cool down machinery. Machinery that is so loud to begin with that you will not hear the fan anyway. Of course, you could go for something like this, nobody is going to stop you, and uh, I'm just saying you shouldn't, but I'm glad that we can. So this should be it about the two missing lineups. And these are our new golden gooses, a Redux NFP12 PVM1700, a Redux NFS12B PVM1200, 
and a industrial line PPC 3000 RPM. But wait, yes, I am going to include the industrial PPC fan in the benchmarks and, and all of the other ones, but do take it as a joke. Nobody should use a fan like this at home or gaming or whatever private. Just this thing is nuts, but we will do it for a joke. And now let's go to the question of the video. Which Nokia fan is best for what job? Beginning with heatsink. We used the exact same Nokia NH-U12A we did on the first video, strapped two of the fans in a push-pull config, and let the 3900X run at 4.2 GHz at 1.4 volts VCOM. Surprisingly, the Redux P12 managed to pull off a pretty good fight here. While it surely did not manage to come even close to an NF-A12X25, it did outperform every other fan, including the NFF12, except for that mini point here. Interesting to note here though is that the P12 and A12X25 share a very similar pattern here. The P12 is just a couple of degrees harder at any given noise level. The S12B on the other hand pretty much matched the S12A with a couple of switches in who's better from start to finish. Coming to the Noctua Industrial PPC 3000 fan. Although the turbine did not manage to compete in the lower speeds, who would have guessed, there actually is a point where the industrial line managed to be very close to the real A12X25 deal. However, the industrial can go much, much further in terms of, in, in terms of noise. Well, yeah, apparently the U12A heatsink is pretty much done at this point because no matter how much more air is being forced through, through that thing, the industrial fan are just getting louder and louder and louder without any significant gain in temperature. Interesting to see is that the U12A is, is therefore actually pretty optimized to be used with an A12X25 and nothing you know, beyond that. So yes, technically the point goes to the industrial fan, but for normal people it's still like the A12. On to the radiators, and we are back with the NZXC Kraken M22. Although the NFP12 Redux scores the second place for max performance, it is so freaking loud at doing so that it falls down to the last place once the other fans are able to catch up. Even the Redux Airflow S12B fan. At full speed, this thing can match a P12 at 25% of its speed and outperform it. It's, it's weird. Now let's add the industrial. <laughs> well, at least now we know that a NZXC Kraken M22 can push quite a bit more if you force it to. And this is with the pump running at half speed. I, I wonder what would have happened at full speed. So, repetition. One point for the sane and one for the weird uncle. Now on to the case fans. Here it's it's really interesting. Although the industrial managed to push way more, both the A12X25 and Industrial 3000 stopped to make the CPU cool down even more exactly at the same 38 degrees C. This basically proves that at exactly this point the amount of air that the Be Quiet Pure Rock can utilize is basically burned up and the thing is just done. However, the industrial is is very loud at doing so. Funnily enough, the Redux P12 matches the industrial for most of its path and therefore actually makes it again onto the second spot for the fans for, for uh, sane people. This time around I decided not to try the best PC of 2022 test as I did last time as uh, I, I uh, managed to find out that uh, this thing ma managed to waste 10 hours of my life, so... Uh, but we will still do the mix-up. Using one Airflow Focus S12B as an exhaust and two P12s in the front, a configuration which proved to be superior for the main lineup, or at least equal, this setup managed to pretty much equalize again a spec'd out P12 bit. Yeah, it's kinda hard to see, but having an A12X25 in the back and two S12As in the front would generate the same result as three P12s, and exchanging the back one for an S12B would just generate a small bump in the room. So to get back to the question of the day, what Noctua fan should you use for what occasion? The first video actually concluded that the A12X25 is generally the best Noctua fan out there for absolutely everything, and nothing changed about that fact. However, it's important to see that there are other fans that lie between you know, the Golden Boy and a NFF12. And surprisingly enough, for most cases, a NFP12 did a hell of a job and it scored second place for case fans, 
second place for Heatsink fans. And the only point where it was insanely loud for some reason that I it is beyond my understanding is Radiator fan. And I don't even know why. Like, yeah, I know fans tend to sound differently when pressed against a high impedance filter, but that's it's brutally loud in, in that scenario. But still, performance-wise, it was second place. So yeah, in the end, it seems like the, the P12 is actually just a more affordable version of the A12X25, yet it is still better than the MFF12. Okay. And if we try to draw those PQ curves ourselves now, this is what they should look like. Plus minus, of course. The S12B, on the other hand, is a very straightforward thing. It's basically an S12A, just a bit louder, all across the board. Nothing revolutionary. For the industrial fan, well, you can, but don't. <laughs> so to conclude this two-part series, which Noxia fan to use in, in what scenario? Well, based on the benchmarks, generally you just go straight for A12X25s if the budget allows it. Otherwise, the best second option will always be a Redux P12. Stay away from the NFF12 and you can go for a S12A or B in the back if you want to save an Euro or two, but this will hurt performance a tiny bit if you turn down the fan speed. But yeah, I guess this was it for those very long videos. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was informational at some point. And as I said in the first video, please share 65 hours of benchmarking. Yeah, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at the NFP12 review. It is a good place to start from here. And if not, you can still join our Discord server and dump all of your trash memes in there. It's a, it's a good place to store them without burning up your phone storage. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.